Welcome back to Mind Pump TV. I'm your host, Adam Schaefer, and we're continuing on this butt series. So we're moving on to the stiff-legged deadlift, probably one of the better movements that you can do to build the butt. All right, let's talk about starting position and your posture. So when you first walk up to the bar, uh, you can either do this from the ground or a, a great place to do, do this is actually to start it off the rack so you actually don't have to pick it up um, all the way from the floor like a regular conventional deadlift. So I'm going to conventional deadlift it off the ground and then we'll go into a stiff-legged deadlift. Now, as far as your, your foot position, when I walk up to the bar, just like a, a conventional deadlift, I want to be pretty close to the bar when I go to pick it up off the ground because we are going to deadlift it off the ground. And so I want my feet about shoulder width apart. Now, that doesn't mean it's wrong if you're a little bit wider, if that's more comfortable for you or you're a little more narrow. That's totally fine. So that's not uh, a problem if you bring it in. Some people will find they can pull better with a more narrow stance. Some feel a little more comfortable. I typically tell clients, line it up with your shoulders or your hips underneath you, whatever feels like a comfortable stance. Now, once you have the, the proper foot position and you're close to the bar, then when you go to pick the bar up, the way you want to pick the bar up is by hinging at the hips. Common mistake that people make is they bend over and they round at the back to get here. And we want to load the hamstrings by sliding the hips out. So you do that karate chop at the hips. I slide the hips back until I feel a real good stretch back here on the hamstring. That's when you know you're doing this right. When you slide the hips back, you feel that good stretch. And then I reach down and grab the bar. Where you grab the bar, again, straight down from where I would be comfortably with my arms by my side. So if this is right where my arms hang by my side, that's about right where I'm going to pick the bar up. So just like a conventional deadlift, I'm gonna deadlift it up off the ground, and then now I'm gonna get ready for my stiff-legged deadlift. Now when we stiff-legged deadlift, what it means is that we are keeping the knees in a fixed position. So some people will lock completely out, that's totally fine. I typically recommend people to have just a slight bit in their knees, but you keep it in a fixed position. You don't wanna see the flexion and the extension of the knee as you're sliding the hips back and forth. So I do have a, a very slight bend in my knee, but they're gonna stay in that fixed position the entire time. And then all the movement is right here from the hips. So the break of the hips, I slide all the way out until I feel a good deep stretch on the hamstring. So it's gonna look like this. Good posture, chest is up high, my chin is tucked in. I slide back with my hips keeping the barbell close. I feel a good deep stretch on the hamstrings, pull the hips forward. So squeeze the butt, thrust the hips forward, slide the hips back, good stretch. I feel a real good deep stretch on the hamstring. Pull the hips forward, squeeze the butt, slide it out, nice and slow and controlled. Now, a big mistake I see is people get here where they feel a good stretch and then they wanna go deeper and then they start to round the back. So that's probably one of the more common mistakes that we see is as you start to set the bar down, people will start to round at the upper back. As soon as you feel a good deep stretch in the hamstring, you've gone deep enough on this movement. All right, so the most important part of this movement is understanding how to hinge at the hips and not to bend over. So a lot of times I'll take a stick with a client and I'll put it against their knees so they can feel that I don't want any movement going there. And what I'm trying to do is to teach them, can we get our hands all the way down to the bar without movement in the knees. So the knees are staying in that fixed position and all the movement is here in the hips. And that's really hard to do if you're, if you're actually going to round and bend the back. The moment you round and bend the back, a lot of people also bend at the knees. So keeping the knees in a fixed position, teaching them to hinge at the hips is the key to this movement working properly. And so we talk about the karate chop at the hips and so you break at the hips, and then you're going to, if we were trying to get the bars low to the ground without bending over, I'm sliding the hips back. Another cue I like to tell people that's kind of controversial is the stick your butt out. So it's a stick the butt out and slide the hips back, and you're keeping that nice level back. Just like the movement where we teach the deadlift in the earlier part of this series, I should be able to keep that stick in contact at all three points as I hinge back over. So this is another great way to use this tool for this movement. That back should stay neutral as you hinge back at the hips. And there'll come a point and everybody's gonna be a little bit different. You'll see some people, they do a stiff-legged deadlift and this is as far down as they can get. That's because their, their hamstrings are really tight. If they go any deeper, they start to round at the back. 
So you're gonna slide your hips out. You know when you're deep enough, when you feel a real deep stretch here in the hamstring. Once you feel that real deep stretch in the hamstring, you've gone far enough down, it's time to come back up, thrust the hips forward, squeeze the glutes. All right, let's talk about tempo and bracing now. So when we do this movement, uh, you're gonna brace very similar like you would brace if you were, were doing a deadlift. So as I, as I come down with the bar, so I'm sliding the hips out, I'm going to be breathing in. And then as I go to lift up, I breathe out. So as I come down, I breathe in. As I come up, I breathe out. Now, another thing that you wanna keep in mind while you're doing this movement too is the reason why this is a great glute exercise is that's where all the power is being generated. Now, the hamstrings do a lot with helping you decelerate the exercise. So as I am sliding my hips out, my hamstrings are really helping slow down this movement. But when I get down to the bottom and I'm all the way with the hip extended all the way out, this is where the glutes come into play. The glutes are the ones that squeeze your butt, fire the glutes forward. That's how this becomes a really good butt exercise. That's where all the power is being generated from this movement. And when you do that, you slide the hips out, squeeze the butt, pull the hips through, and then when you go back out, sliding them out nice and slow and controlled. So your tempo on your way down should take about four seconds. On the way up's a little more explosive, only gonna take you about one second. So it's one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, one. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, one. And you'll feel as you start to slide the hips out, you know when you start getting down real deep, you'll feel that deep stretch. You'll also feel your weight shift back on your heels. That's totally normal. That's when you know you're starting to slide those hips back cor correctly as you feel the weight shift back up on the heels. You drive through the heels and through the butt. So heels, butt, thrust forward. So let's talk about some of the common mistakes and how you know if you're doing this exercise right or how if you know if you're doing this exercise wrong. So some of the common mistakes that I see when I teach a stiff-legged deadlift is when they're hinging at the hips, a lot of times our knees are gonna cave in. So that's just really, really common, especially if you have a, a weak glute med, which is also great. This is why this exercise will be so good for someone developing the butt, is because the muscle responsible from not allowing this femur to internally rotate is the glute med, so it's keeping it pushed out. So you wanna keep those knees in line with your toe. So some people, I have to cue them to think push the knees out. So even though you don't push the knees out and you go on the edges of your feet, you do not want them to collapse in. So you want them in that neutral position. So a lot of people have to mentally think about keeping the knees out as they slide over into the deadlift. So that's a very common mistake. Another common mistake is not keeping your upper back rigid as you hinge over. So really common as we hinge over here is people are doing it right and then all of a sudden they start to round and that upper back starts to round as they come down. Now, a lot of this is because they don't have the proper range of motion in their hamstrings and they're trying to go too deep on the movement or they're not keeping their core tight and rigid through the whole movement. So I wanna make sure before I slide the hips out and hinge over that I brace my core and abs and I keep tension in my upper back. So I wanna be nice and rigid. I showed you guys the stick using the three points, the head, the upper back, and the low butt or the low back. Those three points should stay in contact. So I should have this nice neutral spine. Everything's nice and rigid. You wanna keep the bar close to your body too. Another common mistake that I see when people do this is they let the bar drift away from them as they're doing it. This is gonna make it more difficult for you to keep that neutral spine. You got all this weight out in front of you. It's gonna make that upper back one around. So I wanna keep that bar grazing against my legs. Matter of fact, a lot, of, a lot of guys that do this and girls that do this a lot, you'll see they scrape their shins up. That's totally normal because they're trying to keep the bar so close. That's actually a good thing because the further away it gets, the more at risk you are for injury. So keep the bar really, really close to your body as you're sliding the hips back. That helps counterbalance it too. And then as you pull up, keep everything rigid and tight, squeeze and drive through the hips. All right, hopefully you guys liked that video with those cues. If you guys did, please leave comments below. Also like, subscribe, and share this video if it helped you out. And then those of you guys that want more information on how to, how to build a butt, you guys, we have a free guide for how to build a butt. All you have to do is click the link above.